Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, hanging out by my lonesome. The Warriors just lost to the lowly San Antonio Spurs in a game that everyone knew was a trap game. I mentioned it. Everybody else that I listened to and read (laughs) mentioned it. I called it a letdown game, a trap game. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a game after a big game where you win the big game and then you're just so focused on that. You rode such a high, you expended so much energy that you just think you can waltz into the next game. I mean, and sometimes you don't think it, but sometimes you're just gassed. You don't have the mental, emotional, physical wherewithal to really pull off another win. And the effort wasn't there. The Warriors look <laughs> looked bad, but it's one game. It's one game. And I'm like, is it worth recording a podcast episode for this? Is anyone even going to want to listen to an episode about a trap game? I don't know. If you're listening, I appreciate you. But I'll make this short. The Spurs are the perfect team to have a letdown game against. It's a perfect storm, right? Greg Popovich, excellent, legendary coach, one of the greatest of all time. And they're playing a Spurs team that has some youth, but also has a lot of veterans. They know they can win. They could just put in a workmanlike effort and they'd have a chance. And then also the Warriors would come in off of that back-to-back after playing the Suns. And yeah, it was just gross. Steph couldn't hit anything. And once that happens, the rest of the team followed. Yes, the Warriors were still missing, obviously, Clay Thompson and James Wiseman, but they were also still missing Andre Iguodala. And they sat Otto Porter Jr., who in general has been critical to their success, bring in three-point shooting and defense off the bench. I mean... It's not even really worth going over the stat lines for this kind of game. Just know that it was a meh effort all the way around. And the Warriors, even during their dynasty heyday, they would have the tendency to have these kinds of games. And it is what it is. It's not the first time. It won't be the last. They're not the first team to do it. And they won't be the last team to do it. But it does kind of suck because... (laughs) They all knew. Steve Kerr talked about this being a trap game. Steph knew it was a trap game, and they still couldn't get it done. I get it. Things happen, but that's that's just that's just a shame. They almost brought it back, right? But they let the rope slip, and that is due to the Spurs coaching and some of their veteran guys. They can execute. They were like, okay, I'm not freaked out about blowing a 18-point lead. It's not inevitable that this Warriors team is going to win. So they just did what they had to. But it also shows you that the Warriors are not that good yet. You know, of course, with these guys out. But Steph was talking post-game after the Suns game about how great this team is is and can be and i've talked about that and i still think it's a special team that nothing changes after one stinker of a game but you know they're not there yet where they're completely flat and then they can just make a run and the other team will fold some teams might but like i said not this one if you think back to the brooklyn nets game a couple weeks ago the following game was a trap game the cleveland game if you remember that one against the Cavs in Ohio, the Warriors were terrible. (laughs) They were terrible. And it took a great effort by Steph and Juan Toscano Anderson, who had been riding the bench and was out of the rotation up until that game, to pull that one out. And that game was against some younger dudes who were not used to winning. The Spurs, obviously, they have a different culture. So it is what it is. It's a little frustrating, but, you know, It's just one game, just like the Suns game was just one game. But let's remember this one because this is one that they let get away. And hey, if the Warriors end up in a position to run away with the Western Conference and and even have the best record in the entire NBA by the end of the season, awesome. If they're running away with it. 
but that probably won't happen. Like I talked about in the last episode, the Suns look damn good. And there's going to be some other teams that will start clicking. It might be the Jazz. And in the East, it might be the Bucks. Who knows? The Miami Heat look good too. So you're going to want that home court advantage. If it comes down to one game, I'll remember this one. Like I said, there's probably going to be a few more that are like, ah, man, they should have gotten that one. But this is the first one so far. Yes, you could say that the losses to Charlotte and to Memphis are games that the Warriors should have, could have, would have won. But the first 20 games were about figuring out this team and just being pleasantly surprised at how good they were, regardless of how optimistic you were to start the season. But yeah, no overreactions to this one, but just remembering it for when it happens down the road. And eventually this team will be good enough to just to just put it away. Steph is good enough, but he didn't have it tonight. He tried. Draymond's good enough. Some of the supporting guys may not be good enough yet. You know what I mean? Juan Scott Anderson, Damian Lee, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins. They might not be able just to turn it on the way that they might be able to eventually, but just not yet. This team is learning how to be a championship caliber team. And that's talked about by some of the vets, right? Taking what they know and making sure that culture spreads out to the rest of the guys. And I talk about that too, that you want that championship DNA to inhabit the rest of the Warriors who haven't been there yet. Football fans, I'm sure we all love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game, but with the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you'll be a winner once a single point scored. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code TBPN, bet $1 on any team to score, and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with promo code TBPN this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. The other bummer besides just losing this game to me was the fact that we didn't get to see Jonathan Kaminga or Moses Moody out there. They were both playing in Santa Cruz again, and Kaminga had some great highlights. You should look those up. That dude is just beasting all over the place. And it kind of sucked because, hey, if this team's going to give like a trash effort, then you might as well have played the rookies, right? Because the one thing you don't have in a trap game is energy. And one thing that these lottery rookies have is energy. They definitely would have excited the crowd. They've made plays in the past that have excited their teammates. So I think it would have been an interesting injection of life. And we would have gotten to see these guys play against real NBA players again. But they're getting seasoning in Santa Cruz and that's fine. It's just too bad because, hey, if you're going to toss a game out the window, you could have given these dudes like 25 minutes each. That's all hindsight, I suppose, but it would have been way more fun for me and all the other Warriors fans out there to watch than everybody else kind of just floating through, especially since Kaminga and Moody didn't play in the Suns game. They weren't even in the arena because they were playing in Santa Cruz. So they would have brought a totally different vibe to the evening. They would have seen it as an opportunity because they weren't even there (laughs) for (laughs) the excitement of the Phoenix game, but whatever, moving on. The Warriors get the Orlando Magic at Chase Center on Monday, okay? That should be a game that they win, and I'm guessing they won't flub that one too, especially after this one, especially with a day off. So fingers crossed. Right now, the Warriors are 2-2 two and two for the week, and, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, this has been another episode of the Oakland Warriors Podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick E. Pino or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com, and be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors Podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you're so inclined, would love it if you could leave the show a five-star rating and say nice stuff about us in a review, perhaps. Thanks. And that's it.
featured music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. <laughs>